Today we are getting into the 2D animation course. I've been looking forward to breaking this one down for a while. I'm going to show you guys my optimal workflow that I've refined over the years. So starting in Photoshop, we'll go to After Effects, Adobe Media Encoder, and then we'll wrap it up in Resolume. I'll touch on some unique perks to 2D animating relative to 3D animating, like working with some of your favorite painters or graphic artists, maybe even some AI artwork you've created in the past. I'll also touch on a philosophy with choosing 2D artwork to animate, and I'll go over some examples of stuff I've chosen in the past and explain why I chose what I chose. Now, the purpose of this 2D animation course is to show you how to 2D animate, but most importantly, how to bring this whole workflow together to bring it all in Resolume to show you how to leverage your own 2D animations to make them pop in a live VJ set. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I want to go ahead and break down a couple examples to show you previous artworks that I've chosen to 2D animate and give some examples of why I chose that. Show the kind of the philosophy behind why I leaned into animating these pieces relative to the abundance of other pieces out there. So one thing that I'm looking for whenever I am looking for a piece to 2D animate is a really good focal point. And what I mean by that is, you know, this Hamza hand is a great example. So it is clear, it's easy to mask out, like it's easy to isolate. So I would trace this out and I will show you guys how to do that in Photoshop soon here coming up next. But yeah, you would be able to isolate this and then beyond that, so I can make that, that hand move. And beyond that, you could also isolate this triangle here and do a lot of cool stuff with the triangle. So there's two easy things you could isolate out, not, not to mention if you wanted to isolate the, the heart and maybe make the water drops move. There's a lot of stuff you could do with this. Now, here's another great example. Both of these that I've shown are John Speaker pieces. And this sun has a really good uh, focal point that you could isolate out. You know, you can move the clouds, um, you know, make, this, make the light on the temple move, you got rays here, you got worms, mountains. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here you could isolate and make move around as well. And this is this piece is another speaker piece that's it's paired with it. So here it's the same thing. You know, you got the moon that you could isolate out, the, the clouds, um, you got the eye here, you got the phases of the moon, uh, more mountains here. I mean, these dials, you could even make them uh, animate and, and rotate. So there is uh, a lot of stuff here you can do. And notice with all these, they have a really vibrant um, color scheme to them. And that is another reason that I chose them is they pop on LED walls, especially, you know, whenever it's nighttime and the LED wall is, it's, it's, it's already bright and you got vibrant colors on it. And then especially if you start mixing in feedback and adding rainbow feedback and all types of stuff. I'll show you guys some different techniques that I use to uh, kind of lean into these colors. But, uh, you know, here's another one. This is honestly one of my more favorites with just so much opportunity to mask out and make these things move. I mean, to start up top, you got the triangle eye, you got the cat face, you got the bird there, another bird. Then you got this beautiful elephant in, in the center with a heart that you could isolate. You got a dragon and possibly another dragon or bird there. Um, so there's just so much that you can do with this piece. I love the colors on it. You got mountains and clouds. Um, there's a lot you can do. So another great example there. Now here is um, you know a piece that I did years back. And this one, again, I love the color scheme on it. The focal point with the skull, easy to mask out. And then you also got this central eyepiece here that you can mask out and make that move, whether it's blinking or the eyes, you know, just coming at you and it's repeating. There's, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. So that's something to keep in mind is you want to have um, stuff that you can mask out, animate, and have it be dynamic. So just a little behind the scenes of what I'm looking for as I'm choosing some of my artwork. So most of these are nine by 16 as you can see in fact the only one that was a 16 by 9 is this one which 
you can work with any of them, obviously, because I've animated all of these. But one thing to keep in mind is whenever it is a 9 by 16, you're probably not going to be able to use the full image. You could isolate parts out and then layer those on top. But as a 9 by 16, with usually having a 16 by 9 medium that you're displaying on with your LED wall or projection screen or what have you, um, you know, you would need to isolate these out to be able to look, have it look correct and not have to stretch your material out or your, your content out or anything like that. So hope that helped and yeah, let's keep moving.